is all about wiping out why we need to, like how to fall, why we need to fall, why we need to do it more. I'm not going to talk too much tonight. I'm going to sort of move out the way and I'm just going to be in charge of the buttons. I'll be chirping in at different times. I'll be bringing up the iPad so that we can have a look at some stuff. Now, we, we did get some wipeout footage submitted. Thank you yep. very much. Uh, what we've ended up Had doing a good laugh. is... Uh, what we've ended up doing is putting a little montage together, uh, which I've got here on the iPad. But tonight we've got a very, very, very special guest. I've got no idea how long this is going to run for when these two get on the telephone together. <laughs> telephone that makes it sound really old, but when yeah. they, but when these two start chatting, the it uh, it just goes on for ages and ages and ages. So strap yourselves in. Tonight is going to be absolutely amazing. The special guest that we have got for you. He's a, a very good friend of yours, very close friend of yours. You've done a lot of work with him. You you introduce. Okay, you introduce so him. Um, I'd like to introduce Twiggy. Um, I spent a lot of time in the mentor wise on Twiggy. He's a he was a guard in the boat the first time I met him, and man, the guy has just got a wealth of knowledge. Like you pal out to a lineup, and he just goes, "Okay, Clay, check that palm tree on the right. You line up with that one, and you need, like do the line up with this and line up with that, and." I promise you the sets come through and he, it's just like a golden nugget. He gets you on the best ways. His yeah. lineups are incredible. And his knowledge about the mental wise, about swell direction, wind, like he, he's always, he, he always gets you the best ways. Mm. Now I've, I, I, I've, I've only met uh, Twiggy over the internet. It's never, never actually met him in person, but every time I've heard him talk, it just absolutely blows my mind. Now he is calling in from Bali. He's living over in West Bali. He's a surf coach over there. So uh, depending upon te technology, fingers crossed, everything works for us and, and we, can, we can stay online. But uh, with one thing I'm going to say, this is the first time that we've ever brought a guest in using the software that we're using. So just let me know in the comments if you can't hear anything at any point in time. I'm going to be closely monitoring everything that's going on. But without further ado, we're going we're gonna to hand over. We're going to bring him on. I've just unmuted him. I'm going to move out of the way. I'm going to let these two just go crazy on blackouts. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Cool. So, yeah, Twiggy, welcome. And um, to everyone on Surfax, yep, Twiggy, all the way from Bali on in Bali. Hello, mate. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, all right, Twiggy. So, <clears throat> I would like to pick your brain about wire paths. And the reason being, I was astounded watching the, the Balinese kids surfing on reefs. Um, it's no different to, I suppose, when, say, the Australian kids go and surf the beach breaks, where they normally tend to learn in smaller waves. The difference is, in Australia, the Aussie kids are falling off on sand, and they're going like, oh, that was a bad wipe out. The Bali kids are falling on reef and it's like razor sharp coral heads, yet they don't seem to hurt themselves. So like, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> How come they just seem to like, almost like seaweed, it just floats across the reef and never injure themselves. Man, well, the, the, the first thing I really do want to point out, and it's really important, is that both examples you used are kids and kids yep. play right yep. so when we play everything's light and when when our mood is light then we're light as well now you made the distinction between aussie kids and sand and and balinese or mentawai or indonesian kids and reef but they don't like the kids don't make those distinctions kids just this is what i've got right yep. so the and then also and, and this this would play into it a little bit, but we're talking about falling rather than walking on. But Indonesian kids just grow up in bare feet, you know, like so they can they walk on the reef before they even decide they're gonna learn to surf. But yeah, it's it's got a lot to do with um with the lightness of yeah. um so just um, looking at thinking, the Bolognese right? not they, they, taking it too seriously. Just looking at the locals, they tend to be able to squat really well. They move really well. And um, I think if you look at the Westerners, they probably sit behind a desk on a computer, hunched over, shoulders round. And when 
the Westerners go on the surf trips, they just seem to fall so much harder. Um, why do you think that is? Okay, so the I want to like um, touch on the way we describe things, right? So if we're worried about something, the way we describe the word worry is it relates to being heavy. Something's weighing us down. We're heavy yeah, with down, worry. Yeah, like on your shoulders. Uh... Exactly. If we're apprehensive, if we're unsure of something, this define, this is a way of um, verbally describing something that would make us tense. So yeah. if we're worried, we're heavy. If we're apprehensive, we're tense. And it's like the difference between throwing a rock at the water and throwing a piece of sponge at the water. You penetrate the water much, um, much more if you're tense and heavy. It just even by saying it, you know that it makes sense, right? Yeah. Now, if you're not worried, if you're having fun, it describes levity. It describes lightness. It's it's anti anti worry, if you if you will. So when yeah, you're well, not worried, if, if, imagine if you're at a party and you say to someone, "Hey, let's go dance," and they're like, "Yeah, okay, they're light, they get up, they stop moving." But the guy sitting on the chair, if you go to him, hey, come dance, he's like, no, no. He just kind of drops his hands, digs the toes in, and just makes himself really, really heavy. Yeah. And Dan what, what I like about that is if you think about someone's body language, it says a lot for them. And we've got 13 video clips of, of wipeouts. And it's going to be really interesting when we bring the wipeouts up to, just to see what the body language says about the person and whether they're going to fall light or fall heavy or injure themselves or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another thing I want, another thing I want to touch on too, and, and you and I have spoken about this is, is um, and, and we'll use, again, we'll use the boat trips as an example. Um, people come, into this place that they're a bit unfamiliar with, so apprehensive, apprehensive, maybe even fearful, and they decide that I don't want to take the set waves. So yep. in doing so, they take smaller waves, which, as we know, break on shallower reef, but they still carry the same thought process into falling, which is worry and heavy. So they're in a shallower part. It's like... There's this flow on effect, like every action leads us to a, to a causation thing, right? So there's this flow on effect from I don't want the set waves to I'm going to feel more comfortable on these waves. That's all well and good. But when you fell, you were in half the depth of water than you would have been on a set wave and you were still just as worried. So you possibly touched the reef and left some skin behind, right? Yep. That's a really valid point. So um, whenever people travel and they go surfing, say like Bali or, or somewhere like that, where inevitably they're surfing bigger waves on a, on, a, on a reef, they try to catch the same size waves as they're comfortable with catching back home because that, that's their like sort of the comfort zone. Um, and what happens there is... With catching smaller waves, you end up putting yourself in harm's way where you may end up on the reef and then getting a set on your head and duck dive and get washed onto the reef. And um, oh my gosh, like so much bad stuff happens when they stick with what they know instead of learning kind of something new. Um, yeah. If they, if they were to, let's say, for example, if they sat on the boat and watched the break, and actually thought about this in a three-dimensional thought process. Like what they're doing is looking, they're, they're looking and having a thought process that's almost two-dimensional. So they're seeing, I don't want the set wave, I want the smaller wave, but they're not seeing what that smaller wave does, what lies beneath, right? Yep. If they were to think about it in a macro three-dimensional way and go, well, why is that small wave that looks better? Where's it breaking? 
and obviously the answer is on right on the reef. Shadow if they were to think about that a bit more three dimensionally, they'd probably be a bit more inclined to take bigger waves when they got into the lineup. Yeah, so I I know for a fact because we we've, we've gone in the mental waves a fair bit, and whenever it's small, I, I shit myself because. <laughs> the wave tends to run quicker and it closes out so much more. Yep. Um, so, and if you've fallen off, you're almost going to end up in knee deep on the reef. Whereas you seem to have more time. The wave slows down, it breaks slower. Yes, paddling is a bit more scarier, yep. but once you're on that wave, it just, it's amazing. Um, and if you can slow yeah. your thought but process down, I, and just be present, it's fine. Can I... Can I, I jump had in? By, yeah. Can I jump in very quickly here? Yeah. Because I think what you're now talking about is is really interesting. And what I'd love to know in the comments from everybody else is this whole idea of, say, if you are surfing over reef and this whole idea of taking the bigger ones is safer than taking the smaller ones. I myself, as an intermediate, know that I would be much more inclined. Well, I, I do. I, I go for the smaller ones all the time because to take off on a bigger one, feels more scary than, because I feel like I'm going to hit the reef harder on a bigger one rather than, I know that you're saying that there's, there's more depth of water, but that doesn't sort of come into my head. All I'm thinking is the bigger ones, it's going to hurt harder when I hit the reef. You so need I'm, to make I'm, it you know, come some into of your head comments head. Um, from, from everyone watching. I'm going to disappear again and I'm going to yeah. just monitor the comments as they come in and then I'll jump, jump back in again with some of your opinions in, in a moment. Do you want to answer that one? So what Anthony said is quite relevant. So what, what Anthony said is really relevant, right? And, um, and I guess the thing that we'd add to our coaching would be the um, basic mathematics behind why does a wave break. So a wave, I think, a, uh, I, can't, I can't remember exactly, and I think it's something like a three-foot wave will break in about nine feet of water, something around that. So, I think it breaks, um, the wave heart breaks in about a I know third of the depth. So in other words, if it's a three foot wave, it breaks in a foot of water. Does that make some sense? Yeah. I, yeah. I can't, like I said, can't remember the exact details. But it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely thinking because I mean, it, it would be something, um, so if you could use a mathematical equation to explain that people a fact, probably to put their mind a little bit easier taking away, knowing that it was a site. Because sometimes we explain and you can see like the people are explaining it to me. Yeah, but I still have a little bit of it. Uh, okay, so just uh, just I'm just gonna quickly jump in. Um, I, I know that you can see yeah, just in, uh, Twiggy. We have got a little bit of a lag. Um, just for tonight's episode, Twiggy is over in Bali, so the internet is not quite <laughs> what it would be in some other places. So look, we're gonna we're gonna pass through through it. Um, so I'm gonna bring Twiggy back up on again. Um, but yeah, so yeah. If, if you are experiencing lag, it's probably not your it's probably not not your end. It would be uh, Twiggy's internet connection. So Twiggy, let's let's bring some waves up. Um, I want to show you a couple of wipeouts, and we just want to discuss them and and see what you think. Okay. Okay. So let's we'll, bring we'll, up the we'll bring iPad. Up. Anyway, let me bring up the iPad. So, right, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, so we're gonna look at these. Twiggy, you should be able to just um, talk in over the top if you are still online. Just if we froze up time. Right, so here's a, a slow mo version of Ant. Oh, and okay, if we if we go into that, can you see the the hands never leave the rail? So, Ant's body language is it's all pointing down, and he's looking very very heavy. So when he falls, he's he's going for depth. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually glanced or brushed the sandbank over there. Um, the other thing is that when he dives, he, he's going head first, like bang. So if the, if the board was buoyant and bounced back, it's a very good chance the board could have bounced and hit him in the head. 
So the chances of getting an injury, whether it's hitting the sand or hitting the board, it's very high. And Twiggy, this is something that I, that I want to ask you, is that um, on the boat trips, I found that the higher caliber surfer don't get injured as much, where the low caliber surfers are always getting cut by the fins, hit by the reef, wiping out. And I, I often don't, I often wonder if it's because that um, bad surfers don't use their hands and the boards bounce back, it's almost like, I think Twiggy, you mentioned earlier, you almost want to be like a fighter. Do you want to, do you want to elaborate on that? Oh, no, Twiggy's, Twiggy's dropped out a minute, so he'll, okay, we'll he'll, try he'll, getting he'll, back. he'll jump back in again. So I suppose really what we're sort of establishing here from, from, watch, from watching my wipeout is, um, as you as you know, I had a, I had a bit of a interesting injury uh, back at the back at the start of the year. So so uh, don't do anything I do is 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 a good is a good piece of advice, right? Uh, Twiggy, are you on? Hang on, bring him in. Let's bring him. Assign him two. Guess one should be assigned. Right. Right. Hang on. That's the right. Twiggy. Here we go. Hang on. Hang on a minute, I've messed the screen up. Let's go back here. There we go. Right, Twiggy, can you hear us? Yeah. All right. So, um, I don't know if you saw Ant's wipeout. He literally threw the board head first into the water, no hands for protection or anything like that. So, my question to you is that on all these boat trips that you go on, I normally find that the good surfers don't hurt themselves a lot. They don't touch the reef, whereas the bad surfers are continuously getting hit by the board, chopped by fins, damaged on the reef. Why do you think that is? It's dropped out again. It's the way you fall. And it's, and it's going through your mind as you fall. Um, okay, can you give me a... Right. We're having some issues, Twiggy, with, yeah. with your internet connection. Man, this yeah, you seem to have frozen on it's the screen there, Twig. Let's um, let's try, yeah. let's try this. Um, if you if you turn your camera, oh, there we go. Whatever you did, Twiggy, you you just made the signal a lot better. Cool, you're back. Did I? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, wherever you just stuck your finger, wherever you just <laughs> stuck it in to give some extra signal, put your finger back in there. <laughs> Oh, let's not go there. I got electrocuted a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of Bali. Right. So I think I think before Twiggy cut out, you were, you were talking about people yeah. on boat trips. The, the the better surfers generally get injured less. Yeah. So Twiggy, I'll bring up an example. Have a look at the iPad of you quickly. Okay. We're going to bring you up, up the iPad yep. this way. Oh, no. We're going to take that away. Just go straight to that. So here's Nick. He's busy catching a rail. So this is just for, for everyone watching. This is this is Nick, our wonderful cameraman. So he he falls, but he falls really heavy, really deep. Now watch the board. The board shoots back at his head. Yeah. Okay. So if you knew that a surfboard was going to shoot back at your head, if you turn it back to me, and yep, surely I'm going to bring it up there. Let's do this. If you need the board's any comfy head, surely you want your hands up to kind of protect yourself from getting smacked. But next, just like there, like, oh, okay, let the board hit me. Like, bam, no worries. Or let me go head first into the sand. No worries. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to jump in there, Twigs, what do you think about that? So the first thing I noticed was that he was surfing his front side, but he was going over his heel rail, which would which to me kind of dictates some poor weight distribution. But yeah, he also went down with his, without his hands in a good place. And it's, I mean, you talk about so much and, and we do this in our coaching is about you, when you're surfing, you want to be ready. It's like a boxer, a martial artist, your hands up, you're ready to fight, you're ready to pounce, you're ready to do something. It's exactly the same for a wipeout. It's like you wouldn't step into the ring 
and drop your hands because someone's going to punch you in the face, right? Yeah. So there's no reason to do it on the wave either. But I also feel that, um, yeah, like uh, that was a really awkward fall. And I, and I think it was due to poor weight distribution because if you're on your, if you're always on the, towards the front foot and the toe edge on your front side, you'll always fall over the safe side of the board. You know what I mean? And he fell yeah. over the, let's call it the not safe side of the board. Uh I noticed something there, Twiggy, when you're talking about toe wedge, your fingers dipped down. Yeah. So if you fall that way into the wave, um, Nick would have gone out the back of it. But because he went fingers up, it's almost like chin went up and he fell over backwards. Yeah. Which, yeah. which means 100%. that you could control your hands as to where you wanted to fall on the wave and, and where, where you wanted to penetrate and where you wanted to come out. Absolutely. If... I if you're, I mean, if you're surfing and you should be leading with your arms and your shoulders, then you're also probably going to fall well. Yeah. Just thinking about this in my head, right? And um, and if you're the sort of person who surfs with their feet, and, and I see so much of this, even today I was watching people who were ticking so many boxes getting into a wave, but then on the wave they surfed with their feet and their body's getting left behind. So, yeah, I, I think um, there's that that whole aspect of good technique leads to good falling. Um, Twiggy, I wanted to bring your attention to when some people pedal into waves, they often look at the worst part of the wave, and that's when they end up going. So have a look at this next clip that we bring you up. Right, hang on. I just, gotta just, I just gotta shuffle a few things around here, hang on. So Get rid of that one there. Let's get rid of this one here. Right, I think we're back to square one. <laughs> yeah, so if you have a look at this takeoff, so the guy's paddling and he's bracing, his feet are almost going out to the side, okay, which is not good. Yeah. And then he kind of looks down at the worst part of the wave. He's looking like kind of where he wants to fall. Yeah. And he almost goes like head first into that. And if you'll bring Twiggy back. Twiggy, I, I see this so often where people take off on a wave and they don't actually look where they want to go. They just, they either look right if they're going left or they look at the, the reef and they end up going onto the reef. And um, there's a very important saying is that where you look is where you go. And yeah. because some people are, are fearful of a particular wave, they often look at the worst part and that fear then becomes a reality. I'd, I'd love to talk about what brought him to that exact moment of looking down because when you showed me that frame, I was thinking it's the moments before that frame that led to this problem because yeah. he's, he's turned his back on a wave too early and he had no, even in his peripherals, he could no longer see the wave. Can, can so he was pointing straight down his bring, board, bring his like rail up. wasn't engaged. The curve of the board didn't fit in that part of the wave. He was yep. about to get a tap on the back by a little bit of whitewash. You didn't anticipate the tap on the whitewash, yep. Yeah, every, every decision made in the few seconds leading up to that was the problem. Then the problem was exacerbated by but looking down. I would almost say that he pulled the trigger too early on that one. He over paddled. Yes, exactly, exactly. He was ahead of that wave when he could have waited for it and set himself up in a better situation. Yeah. So, and this comes back. Sorry, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, I think he's worried about the wave being too steep. So he's percent I was about to paddle too early. Yeah. And that was his downfall that he actually paddled himself into. It, it's almost like worried about catching a bus and as the bus comes you step in front of the bus and you get hit by it as opposed yep. to just waiting for the bus to stop and you climb on the bus so it was so it was apprehension that led him to that place it was his lack of belief that he had time so as soon as he thought he didn't have time he didn't have time yep <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> um so, so liam's liam's uh put in a few things that he's noticed here uh asked traveling above the head on the takeoff uh, never good. Means they're bending from the hips rather than the knees. 
That, that's so true. So Twiggy, when you balance a wave, and, and you're the person who actually told me about this, um, the power of the word maybe. So you want yep. to paddle, exhale, and say to yourself, maybe I'm going to go, maybe I'm not going to go. Do you want to dive into that, that the power of that word maybe? For sure. Because um, like a, every, all our problems <laughs> come from our mind, right? They, yeah. It, like, if, if we could if we could draw flow charts about everything that went wrong on a wave for every single person and you'd almost always wind it back to something happened at a level of the mind so people tend to make decisions sometimes too quickly and sometimes too late and if it's too late then the decision probably should have been no rather than yes obviously but there's this there's this thing about maybe, like it it leaves you open. It doesn't have to be yes. It doesn't have to be no. It's just maybe. And while you're using that maybe thought, it keeps you calm because sure, no I means it, it no. It gives you control yeah, yeah. of the situation. It gives you power back. Exactly. It brings the power back to you. Exactly. Very well put. And um and and it's brilliant, you know, like because. How, what's, okay, I said to someone today, I said it probably takes me, I can still catch a wave in the last point two of a second. You know what I mean? As yep. long as I'm, as long as I'm thinking maybe and my body language and positioning of me, the board in um, reference to the wave is all where I want it to be, the decision, yes, doesn't have to be made until that last point two or half of a second and that still gives me enough time to launch into that wave. Twiggy, you said something really special to me there um, that resonated with me. And you said your body language. Um, yes. If you look at a sprinter at the starting blocks, his body language says that he's going to go that way as quickly as he, as he can. But yeah. a lot of the guys, when they wipe out, their body language never says that they're going to make that wave. There's normally yeah. some, some tell that says, they're going over the falls or they're wiping out or there's tension or their, their chin's dropped or their hands are dropped. So yeah. um, it's, it's really good hearing you say that if my body language is saying I'm making the wave, I've definitely made it. Yeah. And even, even if a takeoff's so late that, I'm, that I've still only deemed it maybe, let's say, 50% makeable, I never, I still don't let that translate into a negative thought. The most negative thought I'll have will be the thought of, oh, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see where this ends up. And, and in that, you're still relaxed. And in yeah. being still relaxed, you will probably make it. You might not make the wave. Like you might do the late drop and the wave will get away from you or whatever. You might not. You might make the late drop and get over your air, onto your rail really quick and put it all together like a legend, you know. But the point is, in that second, you still have to be relaxed. So, yeah. oh, well, let's see what happens. We'll keep you relaxed. So, Twiggy, we've got a lot of intermediate and beginner surfers on this group who I would say... The wave's coming, it's jacking up, and they're like, oh, I've been here before like a hundred times, and I know what happens next. I eat shit. So how do you get them from that frame of mind of, of tension, I'm just about to eat shit, throwing the boards and going over, over the falls and eating it, as opposed to going maybe relaxing and actually going, hang on, there's, a, there's maybe some light at the end of the tunnel where I could make this. That's a, that's a really good question. And, and I'm going to tell you specifically, I'm not going to tell you it's easy for starters, but it's doable. And it's like, um, it's like say, in, uh, in a computer or in a program, you have to override something. Yep. And at a human level, what you have to override is what's called the amygdala, which is a part of your brain which goes... We've done this before and it doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, your, and your amygdala is incredibly powerful and it usually... It's like a like, fire alarm in your head. It is. It's like ding, 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 ding. And, um, and, it's, and, it, and it 
muck stuff up for you. So it's you really have to learn to have those keywords. Keywords are so important. Like I've I've found them to be so useful for people where I've said, like they might be in a position where I think, okay, it's going to be a little bit of a late takeoff, but they don't know what they don't know. So how can I make sure they're relaxed? And I'll go, you're in a beautiful spot. And they and you can see the change that it has on them. So yeah. it's about getting the individual to be able to tap into that on their own without you being near them and, um, no. and being able to create that. Can I quickly jump in here? Just uh, that whole concept around um, having like a key word or a key phrase that you say yep. to yourself. I know there's something that within the Ombi program, we... Yeah, we use trigger words a lot. We use that. So, so having that, that trigger word, with, with these trigger words, Twiggy, what, what's the key here and why are they so, and why are they so powerful? I'll j just go a little bit deeper into trigger words because I, I don't think people uh, appreciate just how powerful they are, but also how to use them effectively. They, they touch our psyche since we were children. It's like, it's like if, you know, it comes all the way back to growing up and having your parents say, wow, that drawing's beautiful, or you did something good, or like the, the, the best words that I've found are beautiful and perfect. You're in, you're, um, you're in the perfect position, or it's a beautiful wave and you're in the right spot. But those two key words work incredibly well. There are others. Um, there's more complicated ones, but it all depends on how much time you have to deliver that key word. Yeah. Now, so I'll, yeah. I liked when you said when a person pals into the wave, there's a maybe. Now, yeah. on top of that maybe, if you're a little bit scared, if you go, I'm in a beautiful place, or this is the perfect wave, you're like, well, let me have a go, as opposed to exactly um, your flight and fight response, which is just, get me out of here, I'm going to eat shit, which is tension, just ah, help me, yep. um, where nothing yep. ever good comes from that. Yeah. And if you can help people to understand that, like, say, for example, where I where I live, right, you know, you know, the break that I surf, and then there's Katutz, and then there's the main peak. And, um, and I, I, the whole maybe thing, the, the most beautiful example I've ever had of that, that working and, and it was it made it so clear to me. I was coaching this um this beautiful girl. She lives over on the north side. Her name's Val. And um I hope you're watching Val. And she she's a goofy footer, but we were surfing the ride at the peak. And I explained to her that we were going to position ourselves in this spot where we're underneath the sets. But if they break on that outer, outer peak, we've still got enough time to get out of harm's way, but the best waves come to this spot. And yeah. I said, it's never yes, it's never no. It's always maybe until I tell you differently. And these sets came and she was to my left, so she was more to the shoulder than me and we were paddling diagonally out and this wave just kept standing up and standing up and I was saying, it's still maybe, it's still maybe, it's still maybe. And just as I was about to say no, I realized I was only saying no for my position. And she was another two meters beyond me. And I said, it's yes, go. <laughs> and she, and it was like a double overhead right. And she turned and went and got, at that time, the best right hander she'd ever had. And she surfed it beautifully and like, and after that, everything changed. And she like messaged me months later and said, oh, I still, I still hear Best that. Well surf now. It's maybe, it's maybe, it's maybe. I yeah. think um, being on a coach with you on the boat trips, we've had so many guests come and say that they've had the best wave of their life. And um, it wasn't necessarily a big wave or a small wave. Like... For, for you and I, it was probably like an inconsequential wave. Like we wouldn't have even blinked an eye at it. But for them, um, it was possibly some of the best waves of, of their lives. And I, I know for me, giving waves away 
and helping people just to feel that. So to get them to go from a no to maybe to then going over and above and pushing themselves, they feel so much elation and like the wave just gives them so much energy that they come back going, get me another one. (laughs) And then you know that you've got them and they're hooked. And I think that um, sometimes having a wipeout early on in the session actually is a good thing because it, it kind of gets the worst part behind you and then you can move on from that. Where some yeah. people will pal out and they won't engage. They'll just sit and they'll stew in their thoughts and the maybe just becomes a hard no and a hard no. Then it's like, how do yeah. I get out of here? How do I get to the beach? And it's just, it's stress. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying to you is often having a wipeout earlier on is not a bad thing. You can learn no. from it and that maybe the best is still to come. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And look, I mean, the, the whole fear of wiping out thing, like I've, I've had, I've had you know, numerous people come to me, male and female, and, and we've talked about that subject and, and they, oh, I just, I just don't like wiping out. And, I, and, and I'll say, how many times have you drowned recently? And they're like, oh, probably not even close, you know? And I said, well, so why is wiping out a big deal? Like you, you've attached something to it that isn't necessary, you know? It's, um, you can make it fun. I mean, you look at um, Ross Clark Jones all those years ago when he got interviewed and, and they yeah, said, what do, you, the, what, the do you do, what do you do when you wipe out? He says, I go to the disco. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a so good story. What do you story, mean? He said, well, that's my happy oh, place. Oh. So I do want to ask a quick question to everyone who's watching, and that is, when it comes to wiping out, what is it that you are worried about? So, you, you know that I've got no no issue in saying yep. that, that I get pretty freaked out um, with with wiping out. Mine isn't so much drowning. I do a lot of breath hold training, so I feel comfortable with that. For me, it's getting injured either by hitting the bottom or by the board hitting me or something like that. So for me, it's it's a physical injury. But I've never else is worried about. Uh, is it the being held under the drowning side of things or is it going into the rocks or or something like that happening um yeah for me it's it it's injury so so for, for it Leah, it's hold down so i'm gonna add these to the broadcast and put the camera back on you so i can just pick so, out so twiggy like on a biggish day let's say it's like six to eight feet have you ever been held under for more than about 10 seconds i know sometimes yes it's violent but you pop up fairly quick I don't think you I've actually only ever, for that long. I've only ever had one two wave hold down and that was at South Stradbroke and that was a long time ago and that was pretty violent. And even that was probably only 10 to 14 seconds in yep. its entirety. Um, I think when you feel like, stress, because you've got so much tension in your body, all those muscles that you're tensing are wanting oxygen to help them to tense. So yep. it, it's kind of... Um, detracting from your oxygen supply whereas if you're relaxed yep. under the water you've got so much more breath hold and the, the key sure. is to relax yeah I, I was about to say like the it, like yeah. for me if I'm to wind back through the last few years my worst hold downs have been actually still with my board in my hands and and the amount of oxygen used to hang onto that board, duck diving a really big wave, and then getting actually flipped end to end, still holding the board, that's been that's been the problem. It wasn't yeah, being underwater that was the problem. Just that piece of foam. So to yeah. me, um, yeah. Anne's finding it now, but I've got to wipe no, that. It's not on there. It's not on there. It should be. It's coming after that. No, it's, not, it's after that. It's hang, on, that. hang on, hang on. Hey, I wanted to um, I wanted to quickly say to Ant because he was asking people about what they are worried about, and he said he touched on what he's worried about, and that's the board hitting him or getting injured. And the subject of your worry doesn't matter. What matters is that you're worrying, and worrying is mm. praying for what you don't want. Yeah. So just the act of worrying, it actually, it's like I said, it creates heaviness, it creates tension. It's, it's it really is praying for what you don't want. So you need to um, 
man, let's look, we, we're moving towards a real spiritual realm here, but you have to go to those places, you know, like you have to go to all those little dark corners that you don't like going to and just get comfortable with all the things you, that make you uncomfortable. And then everything's cool. Fear's just not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so you know, with, with that, are you sort of saying, I suppose, in a way, the, the whole kind of exposure therapy, just start to become more familiar with those things that you are fearful of and scared of so that you build up, I suppose, almost create a relationship with it so that you start to understand it more. At the absolute base level, what is fear? What is it based upon? Um, probably history, what's happened in your past, maybe? Is that what, the, so what, is every, what, what is nearly everyone on earth fear most? Dying. Public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's just another form of dying if you don't do it right, Anthony. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your career's <laughs> dying. You die. Uh, so yeah, it's fear of dying, and um, and there's a I think it's Latin. There's a saying called um, "memento mori," which means one day you too shall die, and we're all going to do it, and we don't get to choose when, for the most yeah. part. And it's it, man, you it could happen in your sleep tonight. Don't so, worry about it. So the that worst fear thing of you can dying do. will stop you from from living, living intensely. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Twiggy, um, I want you to watch two waves. Okay, check us one first out. Yeah, okay. So our fads up. So, so everyone oh. watching, check us out. It's I'll do it in slow mo. <laughs> so so that was that D bar. I'll I'll play it again. Who's so, that in the picture? Oh, it's me. I'm on the yellow board. That's what I thought. And there's some big kind of dude just um trying to paddle and um steal the wave off me. So I was like, no, stuff this guy, I'm going. But what I want to make you mindful of. So Where he's stress paddling, board. I'm hardly paddling, I'm doing an Oreo biscuit. But when I stand up, my back straight and I've got my hands up. So when his yeah. when I fall, I've pretty much got this protection where the wave can't hit me. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just think uh, if you look at how he falls, he's almost going like head first over the falls. Whereas I'm upright, the board shoots away and then I fall. So, so many people, if, if they just stood on the board like, like a fighter and had their hands up, the boards are probably hit and glance off a wrist or, and it wouldn't be as painful as impactful. But um, yeah. a lot of people tend to bend their backs, drop their hands, stick their head in the way, and that's when they're getting their fins in their face and the board hitting them and, and going head first into the sand. So um, after that example, I want to show you an example of me doing a turn, nearly falling, but I'm using some bad technique. So let's bring this one up. Uh, okay, so this is me using good technique to you. So I'm indecisive. This was Diva. I waited like an hour for this wave. I finally got a good one. <laughs> and I didn't know whether I should pull in, do a re-entry, bottom turn, or an air, or a cutback. So I had like... 10 thoughts running through my head at once. So I did nothing and I ended up nose diving. So I'm mid face. Yeah. There's the nose dive. Now watch how gently I fall. So I kind of yeah. fall and I glide. You see this little glide of here? Look at this. Look, you, you didn't even penetrate the water. Yeah. So I fall softly. So I fall on my back and I just penetrated through the back. And I actually had quite an enjoyable wipeout. It wasn't bad at all. Mm. All right. Yeah. Um, hang on. Wait for the good one. Ah, this is it. So here's me doing a wait. top turn. So I hit the top turn. Then when I land, I don't soften my legs. So I lock my legs. My hips bend. 
my hands go out of the way and I almost go head first towards the rail. And then I finally kind of get some comp composure back. Yeah. So my point being is that if you were to jump off a table, you would bend your legs and you'd have a soft landing. But if you jumped off the table and you had straight legs, you'd get this real jolt through your body and this shock. And most people that <laughs> land that. with tension, um, the legs, if they lock, the hips tend to bend. And that's when your head goes to whoa down towards the surfboard. The board's buoyant and it bounces back and it hits you. And the girls or guys come up with blood nose, black eyes, and all these injuries. So I yep. suppose on the big turns, you have to soften. You can't carry tension. You need to exhale, bend the knees, get the hands up. And if you do it that way, it's not going to hurt. So you think about if we were to give the surfer who falls tense and the surfer who falls without tension two words each, and one of those words was O, oh, and the other word for the surfer with tension is oh no. <laughs> and the surfer that's relaxed, and the surfer that's relaxed because he still hasn't fallen off, he's thinking, "Oh well." It's like just in those two phrases, "Oh no," or "Oh well." Oh well is let's just see what happens. Yep. So the the more the more critical a turn is, or the more critical a situation is, the more relaxed you need to be. And, and it's, it's a difficult thought process to teach yourself. And this brings me back to the whole death thing. You just have to be okay with failure and just going through that process a handful or more times and understanding that you know, I'm fine. Why are you fine? Well, I'm mostly fine because I fell and I was relaxed. And then sooner or later, you'll be so relaxed that you won't even fall. You'll just sort of know to absorb that impact in a way that you're centered over the board and you'll make one. You know what it's like. One day you make one and then it's like, boom, everything changes. Yeah, you kind of get hardwired not to worry about falling. You're more hardwired into the, the fun of success and how it felt. And, and yeah. it's just like, oh, I want more of that. It's... Yeah, you get tuned in. Hey, you know, um, you know how we were talking about the hands down and the hands up thing before. Yep. It re it reminded me of um your the clip that you gave me for coaching the raising the bar clip, and um, and it's interesting to me that because the protective hands are actually or they should be instinctual, right? And what I think of is the baby learning to walk when it has the arms out, not only is that for forward momentum, but it also means that if the baby falls, it's going to fall forward, which is good. Don't, no one wants to fall backwards. And if it falls forwards, it's yeah, got the so hands true. to put out and protect. So, so you know what, um, it's really it's relevant that people... Um, yeah, so, and I'll, uh, sorry, you go. Twiggy, I'll just go into a little bit deeper, but basically, if you ever watch a kid learning how to walk, it's kind of like dad's got the baby, and mom's over there, and mom's calling the baby, and the baby sticks the arms out, and kind of does this, like Frankenstein yeah. walk, and the whole thing is that if the baby did fall, it would, would fall onto the hands, mm -hmm. it doesn't walk with like hands behind its back, and it's like, bang, face plant onto the floor, the hands forward also helps it give leverage to travel in that direction. Now, most of the people that are falling, and I spoke to Twiggy about this earlier, what's your body language saying? So if you've got your hands forward, you're going to travel in that direction. And if you did fall, you'd fall onto the hands. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to fall as far. You wouldn't penetrate as hard. Um, and if the board did hit you, it would just hit the arms. It wouldn't hit the face or anything um, that's going to damage you. So that's a really, yeah. really um, relevant point there. Well done. Yeah, I mean, even like, um, say, people that are so drunk they can't get their hands up. You know yeah. what happens, right? Oof. They break, break noses, lose teeth, split lips, whatever. Yep. If you're, um, you know, if you're not at that level of drunkenness where the hands still come up, or 
like think about falling forwards when you're sober, when you're sharp. You only ever fall with your hands out in front of yeah, you, Yeah, like right? a cat landing on your feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why skateboarders break so many scaphoid bones. Because, boom. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. So there is, a, there is a little question that's come in here, and it says, I honestly don't reckon that you can relax mentally in larger surf without having at least done some base training. Trigger words mean nothing over lived experience, even if only simulated. What's but can someone tell me what base training is? I think it's just, um, I suppose. I think um, just being aware. You of, can't. Nothing can prepare you for a situation without actually being there and physically feeling it, like immersing yourself in it. Like no amount of trigger words can make you ready for it. Um, I, I totally, I totally agree. And, and here's, here's the thing. Surfing's like, surfing's just one of those sports that your levels of progression, whether it's with your ability or your technique, it's also the size of the waves you surf. Like at some age you start surfing head high waves and the first time you do it, it's uncomfortable and you do it more and it becomes yeah. comfortable. And then as you get older, you surf double overhead waves and it's really uncomfortable and you do it more and it becomes comfortable. It's the same with anything. I think also what's being mentioned there is that if you felt like you've done the training, you're going to feel confident that if you do have the wipeout that you're going to fall back onto this training that you've done. Um, I've seen some fairly bigger blokes who are unfit that are just confident and they'll go out in some big surf and take a wipe out and just come out laughing their heads off. And yeah. all it means is that they're comfortable and confident that if they do fall off, they're like, oh, well, they'll just shrug it off, climb on their board and just slowly paddle back out again. Yeah. Um, and I've seen some really fit guys who just freak out. Um, so even if you've done the training, it's where is your head at? It's um, are you able to relax and and just be in the moment and not freak out and go to the future or, or the past or it's just being present yeah. and knowing that you're okay in that moment absolutely and we all we like we've just we've just walked into a yoga retreat basically because it's we all carry different stuff with us right yeah and um and and nobody knows what the next person's carrying it's we're all very individual in that way and um some of us like i know people that don't surf that well who are just animals in big waves and they just charge it and i'm like oh it, it, on some level like like i get it i kind of i'm i respect it but i'm like man if that guy had good technique as well well you know but yep. um and then some people have great technique and just the big waves thing isn't for them. Like I'm not a huge wave surfer, not at all. I'm like double, triple overhead. And I, I like to call myself a good wave much. surfer, not a big wave it, surfer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, look, man. Yeah, it's like the whole the whole psychology thing. It's, it's huge. And, and there's so much correlation between yoga and surfing and life and... Mm all that stuff it's like there's um it's a lot of energy involved in the ocean man water's the most powerful element on earth mm. no i i i do agree with that how are we on time hey twiggy um mate, I, we're, we're coming up for an hour yeah so what i'd what i'd really like to do is is so we know that the mental game is huge like we've we've established that that is that is absolutely massive. The use of trigger words is is, is a really good way. We yeah. also have now um, through the comments and, and through everything that you've said, that whole idea of of saying maybe to start to expose yourself more to these bigger conditions, these different conditions, so that you start to become comfortable and start to understand it more. So, I think what would be really helpful for everyone watching would be to to, to, actually, to actually talk about how to fall so that's i know that you saw saying about hands forwards and you then you go forwards being held underneath 
relax, don't go stiff because then you get held underneath. But let's say, because I think that this is something which would come up a lot for a lot of people, and it's a fear for a lot of people, is that whole idea of you go to catch a wave, and let's just say it's a, it's a bit more of a, 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 a bit more of a pitching wave, it's a bit more of a barreling kind of wave. Somebody goes to paddle into that wave, and they reach that point where it feels like they're going to be pitched over the falls. This is something that comes up a lot inside the group. You're about to be pitched over the falls, so then you start to have this second guessing yourself. I need to hold. I need to. I need to pull back. But then it's too late, and you end up stuck in the lip and being flown straight over. In that well, situation, there. Check this one. Let's call up the situation. Okay, so we can bring up the iPad. But hang on a second. In that situation there. You're kind of out of control because, as you just said to yeah. me, the, the, the ocean is such a powerful force. You can't control the ocean. It's going to ragdoll you. It's going to throw you where it wants to throw you. How can we minimize the, the impact? Let's, let's, let's bring this up, first of all. Have you seen me at Stratty about to eat it? I'm laughing. Yeah. I'm generally having a good time. Like, if I've made a bad call and I'm, I'm going to go over the falls, I'm probably think, oh well, Anne's watching. This is going to be on camera, and I'm, I'm off. Like, I'm almost kicking myself for being an idiot. So I'm just like, well, you deserve this. Take it on the head, and I'm like, I'm laughing. I'm going under the water, but when I hit the water, I'm trying to come up the back of a wave. I never want to be in the front of it. And you'll probably see when I'll do wipe out. I, I, I almost angle and the wave because the energy is broken it normally sucks you up the back of the wave and then you can grab your board and you can paddle out it's not as bad um what, what's your take on that twiggy oh yeah like yeah i see that you're smiling it's like you're surrendering to the wave you're like oh i'm gonna eat it let me enjoy this so i i know anthony's in car us over one mind. Oh, I, you, you, you break it up a bit, Twiggy. After and only stick your finger back wherever it was before, yeah. Twiggy, because you're, you're 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 breaking up. Okay. <laughs> right, while while we're getting Twiggy's internet connection back, we'll bring up the iPad. Okay. So talk to us from here, Clay. All right. So check us out. It's a really really steep drop. But if you look at the person's body language, it does not look like nothing in this in the body language says it go that way. He's just thinking about, I need to get to my feet and I need to survive. So what happens is he kind of, he stands, he falls out of it. He bends his back. Oh. I think he almost lands on the board oh. and just falls in front of the wave and gets obliterated. Okay, so I think in, in those situations, um, in his mind, that surfer was thinking, I've got to make the drop so I don't die. But in doing so, he was disconnected with what the wave was doing, how quick the wave was moving yeah. and what he actually needed to do. So I don't think he was actually looking and reading the wave. He was just thinking, oh shit, I've got to stand and try survive this somehow. And that's the big thing. That Had he have looked, he probably would have angled in and he would have been getting barreled down the line right now. But in those yeah. moments, like I know I catch myself going, oh shit, I've either haven't paddled enough or I've, I've gone over the, I'm going to eat it or I've picked the wrong line or something's happened. I tend to smile and laugh at myself for being an idiot. And that, that I, really I, relaxes me. Okay. Now, uh, Twiggy, it looks like your internet's pretty good again. It was like you wanted to backtrack yeah. a couple of steps by the sounds of it. So, I, I, like, so that wave, like the, fr the very first frame that you guys brought up, once again, I wanted to see what happened in the two or three seconds leading up to that moment because, uh, like, he was, like, where yeah. you started that frame, that was like um, abandoned hope. You, all, all you, you went up type stuff. Um, yeah. But like in, in relation to what people are saying about, um, you know, those late drops and not making it and, and that all comes back to a level of spatial awareness where you probably should not have gone for that wave. And, and if you're making those choices that keep leading you to those results, you need to reassess 
your spatial awareness and what's making you choose those waves. There's a lot of um, self-reflection and self in introspection that has to go into this to, to rectify it if it's an ongoing problem that happens a lot. So what I say with people in those situations like he was faced with there, it's, it's kind of like imagine you're driving a car, you get a T-junction and you're about to pull off into traffic. And what you do is you let go of the handlebars and you look at your pedals and you accelerate. And you just <laughs> exactly. thinking, hopefully I survive this. Like I, I just yeah. got to get going and stand. It's, it's yeah. about entering traffic, picking the line, figuring out what's the speed limit, to how, how much do I need to accelerate to actually flow into this wave. Um, and yeah. I, I just think a lot of on bigger ways, people panic and freeze. And those are the ones getting pitched over the falls that you laugh at. Whereas the good surfers are almost like taking up deeper, backdooring it. And they look like they're creating time. Yeah. If I was, if I was to make for, for the sake of this conversation, a 10 point checklist for identifying, catching and riding a wave. If you've missed checking three of those first five points, you're not going to even get a chance to check the next five because you haven't identified like positioned and made that entry point well. So it's, yep. it's a case of like, there's all these boxes where you have to tick along the way. It's a, it's a series of multiple equations that sure you can get one or two of them wrong along the way. But if you, um, if you're working at a 60% or less success rate, they're, they're, that is also going to dictate the success rate of your surf. Yep. So when we first jumped on, I said that you're amazing at almost like picking out triangulating exactly where to sit. And um, you're, you're almost what I would call a wave magnet where waves come to you, you don't go to waves. Um, and then you said something to me that before you stand up, because you, you claim that you stand up really slowly, but you do something that works really well. And it's just to breathe. Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that and how that stops you from having bad experiences or bad wipeouts and how it actually gives you more time? A hundred percent. And it's something I never started doing until after I'd, um, sort of dove into the whole yoga world, which I, which I didn't, I didn't like go nuts on yoga or anything, but I was offered the chance to do a teacher training course and I learned a lot from it and I learned about the importance of the breath. And, um, I discovered that it took me a while after the, after the fact sort of thing, but you could be in a yoga class and, and you'll, anyone who's done one will, will be really familiar with the, whoever's guiding the class saying, now focus on the breath and la di da di da Focusing on the breath isn't about focusing on the breath. It's about getting all the lunatics to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Soon, Get rid of the noise. Because as soon as you focus on the breath, it gets quiet, right? And all you hear is the breath. So I started toying around with, and, and it works so well that I do it very instinctively and naturally on every wave I catch now. And I'm in this arched posture. And at the last four paddle strokes, I just go. <sighs> and you see the way my chest contracted then as I as I put that breath out, even though I've still got my head up and my chin up. So I'm keeping that really wide field of vision, just that contraction of the chest as the breath comes out puts that little bit of downward pressure on that, those connection points of the board and you engage. And it's probably the single most successful tip that I've had with um, intermediate surfers as far as catching and paddling into waves. As long as you can get them to stay in that posture yep. and yep. you just see them glide, they paddle back out going, oh my God. It's that simple. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, 
but you've got to remember do it on every wave now. But yeah. it doesn't take long. It, it works so well that people get it. They, they make it a habit very quickly. Yeah. No, that, that's absolute gold, Twiggy. Thank you so much for that. It's really good. No worries. I mean, and it's true. I do. I am slow to my feet. So all the things that I do leading up to that point make the fact that I'm slow to my feet quite irrelevant. What was that? Sorry. No, uh, so, it's all right. <laughs> You're uh, <laughs> giving away some of the secrets I'm doing here. Right. No, I'll just, as you were saying then, Twiggy, I actually, that whole thing about the breath, I've actually just made a yeah. note of what time you said it because what you've just said there is absolute gold. So we're actually going to cut that out as a little one or two minute clip because there's been loads of gold, but that one thing in particular with the whole breath is is really good because I know that you use it on the ramp. You get yeah. people to do it so that they stop holding tension. You're saying that you use it on the paddling. There is a lot to be said about breath, how yeah. the breath can change the way that you feel and change how much tension you're holding in your body. Can I, yeah. can I give you a super quick example of what it does and i'm not 100 percent sure this will work but i've got that surfboard sitting right behind me so let's see if we can pull it off because the surfboard's curved surfboard's curved right it was it's all right the, nearly broke the window broken the window <laughs> the surfboard's curved and i'm i'm curved as well in my paddling posture and my points of connection are my mid to lower ribs which are going to be around here somewhere and my yep. pubic bone area, which is around here somewhere. So if you focus on those two points and then think about the middle of the board and those two points controlling tipping the board. So if, if my body's curved, but those points are the connection points and that outward breath makes my chest contract, it just tilts the board enough, just like that. So yep. it's a tiny thing that just has a beautiful effect for that, allowing that wave energy to pick you up and you glide in really, really well. That's awesome. That's so good, Tweety. Thank you so much for the share. No worries. It's been a pleasure. Um, cool. So look, we're, we're in uh, an hour and 10 minutes. So I know that you two could, could talk <laughs> forever. Um, yeah, we could. We haven't even got into boards or twenties or anything yet. So tails so, are... It's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll get Twiggy back on again. We we'll have, have to make sure that we, we do it when you've got I'd good weather, so you've got good internet. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Hey, look, I mean, while, while we're on that subject, I may have fiber off Nick in the not too distant future. So that'd be yeah. awesome. Excellent. There we go. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna come on out every week. <laughs> you take yeah. my place. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, so 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 let's let's wrap this up. So uh, okay. we've, we've had that yeah. real good piece of gold there from Twiggy about the breath. There is so many more. I'm going to go through this and try and extract out a whole bunch of small clips from this. But really quickly, then somebody who is falling, yeah. What do they want to try and aim to do when they're th so? If, if you were to just give it, like if someone came up to you and they said, "Look, I'm really scared about falling." Can you give me some advice on, on how to fall? What what yeah. would what would you so, both say? So uh, I don't here, mind here's my advice. This is what uh, my Japanese friend um, Takeru said to me. If you've got a negative, where's the camera there? If you've got a negative, right? This camera. If you make a small change to the negative, it becomes a positive, and another small change, it becomes uh, multiplication. So basically, you, you're going through a couple of wipeouts, okay? Just the right keyword, like I'm in a beautiful spot, or this is a great wave, might take that negative into the positive, okay? And then by just relaxing and having the right body language to take you to where you want to go, that's like multiplication where you now just, you've made it, the exhalation, the energy and the wave, it's going to give you what you're looking for. Okay, not the answer I was expecting. Triggy, if somebody said to you, like if, if you were coaching somebody and they said, look, I'm really scared of falling, what do I, like if I'm going to fall off, how can I minimize risk of injury? What would you say? I would suggest, and, and, and this is like at the moment, 
here in, especially around where I live, there's a lot of waves and not many people. So I like, you know, I see how crowded it can get over in Australia and depending on where you are or whatever. But I, I really feel like people need to start asking themselves what would happen if I tried to catch less waves but focused more on being in the perfect position. I don't mean for the rest of your life. I just mean for a handful of surfs or maybe do it for a month and see if you can maximise your success during a surf. So don't consider the amount of waves you get a success. Consider the amount of waves you get and make as a percentage of your total. And see if it see if just being a little bit choosier rather than feeling like you have to catch as many waves as possible. And like I said, I know this is difficult when it's crowded. Sometimes all your plans are going to fly out the window, right? But um, but just try and mix it up a little bit and and look for that opportunity to um to hone your spatial awareness and your positioning skills. Like anyone in this conversation or let's write in comments or whatever if if they were to think about their best waves ever i guarantee you they were in a really good spot they felt good about it because they were in a good spot they believed they had time therefore they did it's that whole flow on effect of being accurate so be more accurate. Yeah, okay, that, be more accurate. that's amazing. And now one more, one more, one more quick question. So I, these are things that, that we've already discussed in the conversation, but I just want them as clear takeaways. So yep. that, um, pretty much so that I can chop them out and then put them up as little golden nuggets. If somebody is worried about being pinned underneath, so they're, Ooh, okay. they're worried about the pin down. Okay, wait, wait. I know we're going to go a little bit longer on this, but hang on, Twiggy. So we, we had a Facebook user say, Ross Clark Jones thinks of a hectic rave party with hot girls. I'll, I'll bring the comment up on the screen. So, so normally when you're underwater, you think that you've been out there underwater and you're getting ragdolled and it feels like time just takes forever while you're getting ragdolled. But yeah, why don't you just go into the story about Ross Clark Jones, please? I love it. Yeah, so, so he, he, was, he was asked... Um, in relation, because this was an interview a long time ago, right? It was, I think it was in relation to surfing Wyomere Bay. And they said, what is, what's it like when you're underwater? He said, oh, it's fine. I just go to the disco. And um, and, they, he, and it was basically what he was saying was, you've just got to go to your happy place, right? Yeah. Now, everyone has a happy place. Um, I don't have a specific one, but I, I took probably my... Um, the thing that made me most comfortable with it, and it wasn't all that long ago, like five or six years ago, I went and did a free diving course. And it wasn't so much the physical course that gave me this, but the theory behind it. And when I realized that when you get uh, the UTB, the urge to breathe, when that comes, when you're underwater, it means you're not even 30% through your oxygen. It's closer to 20 or less, I believe. So when you get the urge to breathe, you still have about 80% of your oxygen left. Mm. And when I, when I was told that and realized it was true through practice, I was like, oh, this is a game changer. <laughs> so, so for me, I just like, when I get the first urge to breathe, because the urge to breathe is, a, to me, it's a voice in my head going, we need air. And then I just say to the voice, well, you're not going to get any down here. <laughs> <laughs> and then the voice goes, all right, I'll come back later. <laughs> by the time the voice comes back, you're already at the surface. Yeah. Oh, mate, that is absolute gold. You're not going to get yeah. any down here. There we go. So we've, yeah. we've kind of had the, uh, that final question answered. Uh, Alan Thompson has said uh, so much great info in there. Tennis old timer into a grommet again. So it's been uh, very well received tonight. Uh, I think, look, we're, we're an, an hour and a quarter. Do you want to, do you want to wrap it up? Did you have any more stories? Do you want to tell Twiggy? Is there anything that you want to add? Or 
I'm I'm good, man. We'll get to do it again sometime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah, definitely, I just want to definitely. say thanks, and that also how like. We, we're always on the boat trip saying how like surfing is a metaphor for life because how you are in the water is almost how you want to live your life. You want to have good posture. You want to be stress-free. You want to be more in the moment, enjoying the good parts and not stressing about the bad parts. Um, and I think tonight was one of the really good parts by having you on here. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Love having you. And just the way you see and like explain stuff just makes me laugh. I love I love hearing your stories. Thank you so much. Tell you what, the next time I'm underneath, next time I'm underneath, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm really about being underneath, but I'm, I'm probably going to end up choking because while I'm underneath, I'm going to be thinking about what you say, saying that you're not going to get any air down here, which will cause me to laugh under the water. I'll end up taking water <laughs> on and end up choking. But uh, look, um, not only have you given us some gold, the, the yeah. comments has been alive tonight, and uh, Steve has said there. Some great audience comments too. So just reading through the chat has been uh, amazing. Let's just bring up a few more of the comments before we go. Oh, I just checked in, been waiting for this one, looking forward to watching on the replay. Yeah, make sure you check out the replay. And as I say, we'll try and chop this one up for little golden nuggets. It'll probably be, how long How long is this? We've been going for an hour and 16 minutes. So we had it, the golden nuggets will be probably about an hour and yeah. 16 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carl <laughs> said, go on, man. Triggy is an absolute legend. Great interview. Hey guys, I, I just want to say thanks for having me. Um, it's like, honestly, it's an absolute pleasure. And one of the main things I want to emphasize is I haven't had the opportunity to share a lot in the last few months with an injury and not coaching and all that. So to be given this opportunity at a time where I really needed it, was at all, guys, so. Thank you. Well, Twiggy, you're, you're more than welcome to come back on whenever you want. Whenever you want at all, because I kind of quite like moving to. sideways and just pressing buttons, even though tonight <laughs> I've been challenged at the, the button pressing. We've got, we've got lots of comments <laughs> coming in, in here. Um, so as, as, as always, what I'm going to ask everyone to do is to what has been your golden, your golden nugget? What's been your biggest takeaway from this? Leave it in the comments section below. Please guide people towards this, especially to this interview here. I know this has been absolutely uh, an absolute golden session tonight. So guide people towards it. Invite people into the Surf Hacks group. Uh, Twiggy, if, if anybody wants to sort of reach out to you, I don't know if I'm f throwing you under the bus here or not, but if somebody wants to reach out to you and get in touch, then uh, how can they do that? Or do you not want me to say that? <laughs> um, they can find me... They can find me um, Better Surf Technique on Instagram or Twiggy Van Ryan on Facebook Messenger. I'm not really on Facebook, but I've still got Messenger. I've kind of let Facebook slide at the moment. But yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm on Instagram as Better Surf Technique or Twiggy Van Ryan will bring it up. Cool. Awesome. Well, what we'll do is after we've after we've, we've logged off, I'll put the, the, the links to, to your thing in the, in the either in the comments or in the description above. Uh, one, one last thing for everybody. If you haven't already downloaded the app, make sure that you do download the Ombi app. If you're watching this on YouTube, then please, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe uh, button, also hit the notification bell. We will be getting more Twiggy back, at least once more Twiggy. So we will get more more Twiggy back. Uh, we'll come up with some more great topics. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you close this one out tonight, Clay. Goodbye, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, did a terrible, you did a terrible job. Twiggy, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so, so much for, for, for jumping on this evening. Uh, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna, I I'm appreciate gonna you guys. guys back into your little room there in Bali. I'm going to bring us up big here on the screen. So guys, thank you for tuning in tonight. It's been absolutely amazing. Thanks for all your comments. You were super interactive. Loads of great content coming in there. As I say, we'll be chopping this up, making loads of little golden takeaways from this. Uh, but in, we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. Don't quite know what we're yeah. talking about yet. If you've got any suggestions, then, uh, then, then send them through to us. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And you'll be more confident. And you'll have fallen off a lot. And you'll have loved it. See you then, guys. See ya.